top of the morning, middle of the evening, bottom of the afternoon. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Fresh, and I am back with a different type of video. Today is December the 9th, Vlogmas Day 9. And so, my family had Bible study yesterday, the second on this Tuesday. And then I shared this little study I did, whatever, I, I don't know what you want to call it, a Bible study. It was my turn to go over some stuff. And so, anyway, I'm going to share with you guys. So we're going to have Bible study real quick, okay? Um, I'm going to try to add the scriptures in here, but I'm going to also try to read them as I go, go along without trying to make this super long. So sit back, relax, enjoy. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share the video. And all right, let's get into it. So this was way back in like April, the in the month of April this year, April 16th. And I was off work at this time and my family had started this Bible study and this came to me. Okay, so it's called, I titled it, Don't Sideline God, Press Through. And I had three topics, three points. They were, the first one was seek God. The second one was study and read the word daily. And then the third was pray without ceasing. Um, as I go through each point, I'm going to give you my scriptures first, and then I'm going to um share so for seeking god we're going to start with deuteronomy 4 verses 29 through 31 and it reads but if from thence thou shalt seek the lord thy god thou shalt find him if thou shalt seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee even in the latter days if thou turn to the lord thy god that and shall be obedient unto his voice for the lord thy god is a merciful god he will not forsake thee nor neither destroy thee nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them okay um and that's about see this is all coming from king james version okay the next one we're going to go to is jeremiah Twenty nine and thirteen, and that reads, "And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart." And the last one for seeking is Matthew six and thirty three, and that reads, "But seek ye first the kingdom of God." and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you and what i had wrote down at that time was just i'm going to kind of just read it to you guys how it was given to me and that's why i'm gonna be doing more looking down and looking up so often we go through things we want to get through it without but turning to addictions or using things that give us no accountability you can't do that guys okay um me when i do things like that i just try to sleep it away or i try to watch anime or something like that something that doesn't make me think or it it doesn't you know make me feel convicted um and i'm gonna be real vulnerable with you when i say even i you know drinking alcohol um i i use that um as well um but that's at that point where you gotta say you know, you got to make the conscious decision, the effort. And that's what this all is about to say, okay, I'm going to give time. I'm going to give myself to God completely because I, you can't keep turning to the things of this world to get God results. Um, so that's when you just got to press through and tap in to God. Um, you have to fight the urge to run away. You have to seek God for help in whatever is going on. Ask God for clarity, strength, peace, deliverance, or whatever it is you need at that time. And then ways to seek God is through fasting. And we're going to go to um, Exodus 34 and 28, um, where it talks about fasting. 
and it reads, And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Um, fasting can come in many different ways. You can fast from food, um, TV, music, things that keep you kind of away from lining up with God and, and then getting into a deeper relationship with God. Um, for me, the ultimate fast is the sacrifice of food. Um, but you're not limited to just that. Um, another way is consecrating. Um, consecration to me, when I read the definition, um, is something you have to really, really be ready for because consecration is a rededication of your heart to God. Um, I'm going to go to Romans 12 and 1, which reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then we're going to shoot over to um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, which reads, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, so you got to be ready when you try to go and do consecration. I'm not saying don't do it, but I just think you got to get to a point where you're just like, okay, God, I'm tired of running to things of this world. I'm tired of this and that. I'm ready just to commit to you and, and go down that road with you. Um, and that's that. Um, my second point, y'all. I was writing some stuff down. The second point I was um, had written down was to study and read the Bible. Um, um, I have Ephesians 6 and 11, 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 6, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, and Matthew 7 and 13. Um, I'm just going to take this time and y'all just continue to bear with me and we're going to go through those um, so you guys can kind of be in alignment with where I'm coming with and why I'm saying what I'm saying. So Ephesians 6 and 11 reads, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I'm using my app half of this. I should have wrote it down, but in my mind, I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna take this opportunity. Let me just share this. You know, when I started, when I wanted to do YouTube, I said I wanted to keep God in the primary focus. And I really got to get back to doing my scriptures at the beginning of my videos. And so I was just like, if they'll support me through learning dialysis, I'm sure they can support me through this journey. If it's for you, I hope you receive something from it. If, and pass it on if it's not. Um, 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 6. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching, itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Second Corinthians 10 verses three through five reads, sorry, my camera cut off. So second Corinthians chapter 10, three through five reads, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that, ex that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to, obedient, to the obedience of Christ. And our last scripture will be Matthew's. 7 and 13 which reads enter ye in at a straight gate 
for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction many will be, and many will be many will there be which go in thereat okay so in relation to those scriptures you know the bible to be honest a lot of us we treat it like we have a a, a lifetime to read it or to understand it or go through it myself included but we really don't um y'all know those who know now more than any other time a lot of signs have been showing where it's just coming to the end times and it you got to get your life together um we need and should be tapping into the word daily the bible equips you with the armor of god it covers and prepares you for whatever you will experience in life and how to handle these things the bible the bible actually will make you laugh which is true when you read through some things you will chuckle it'll give you joy and it will make you see god's real flex you get into that old testament and you read some of the things god did <laughs> Whew. chastisement Whew. um but you know there's a lot in the bible to learn from to grow from um you know when you read ask for understanding if you don't understand you know just ask for understanding and god will give it to you um i'm not telling you that you got to read the book the bible in one day i ain't saying you got to read the whole book of genesis in a day but start with a chapter a verse a few verses if you don't know where to read say lord you know show me where or if you feel in a type of way if you're looking for joy or you looking for peace find out you know google it ask somebody your pastor or evangelist in your church like hey you know I'm having this struggle. Where can I look at it in the Bible? Where can I read on it? Where can I study it? And when you read the Bible, I always say, and I started to teach myself, like, take notes, write down scriptures, you know, because it'll start to stick. You can recall it, you know. The Bible is there for you. It's your handy tool. And I was telling my family yesterday, I was just like, a lot of people know some people don't, a lot of people don't know, some people do know that a lot of these um, Fortune 500 companies, these billionaires, even musicians, um, the industry on that backside, not performing on stage, but that office, that profession, that business side, a lot of these companies build their, 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 their principles, their standards of the principles of the Bible. Um, and my mom made a good point as to say, like, you can look at, the charity is given to charities. It's innocent. It's like tithing. So, you know, don't think that, well, I don't see um, such and such celebrity or, or, or Lil Wayne or, 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 or Keisha Cole or I don't see them doing this. But you just looking at what they're putting out there for you, your entertainment. You're not knowing what's going on behind the scenes. So put your uh, time in. Do your bid. Give God his due um but i ain't gonna press you but this is just what i'm sharing and i take it how you want it no no harm no foul um my last and third topic was pray without ceasing um praying and seeking god you can kind of tie together but you know you gotta pray because prayer changes things and yes that phrase is so popular and has become so much more popular that, you know, people just kind of say it just to hype somebody up and they just run with it. It kind of, it's kind of taken away from the real true meaning and value of it to me, in my opinion, because prayer changes things, prayer changes things. It's like, no, but it really does. That statement has power. It is true. It happens. Um, you know, and you be like, well, I pray for these shoes or I pray for this, but everything is in God's timing, not man's timing, God's timing. What about say a day is with the Lord, like a, as a thousand years. So it's on God's time, but you got to sit back and relax and wait for him to move on your behalf. And you got to really put your time in. You can't just be picking up God and, and, praying for something when you want and then putting him down back in the corner and not giving him his honor. You got to do your part. Um, um, I wrote down some 
for the prayer, I just had more so examples out of the Bible. So we're going to go through, we're at Matthew 7. I got Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if the, his son asks bread, you will give him a stone? Or he, if he asks a fish, you will be give him a serpent? If ye, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall the Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Then we're going to shoot over to James 5. verses 17 and 18 and that reads Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months and he prayed again and the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit prayer changes things three years and six months once he asked God to not let it rain. And then when he said, let it rain, God opened up the heavens and it flooded. Okay. And then we're going to shoot over to Genesis. The beginning. The beginning. Genesis 17 verse 16. And God, this is what um, Abraham and Sarah son. And God, and excuse me, and I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she will be a mother of nations. King of people shall be of her. How long was she waiting and asking and wanting a baby? And then she remember she laughed at God. And then, you know, God finally told him, I'm going to give you a son. That's when she laughed. And he gave them, and she was pregnant late in her years, but he answered her prayers. And the last one I have, oops, no, I read that, sorry. Okay, that was it, the last scripture. So, in essence, when it comes to prayer, prayer also deepens and develops your relationship with God. Prayer stretches you and takes you to another level in the spirit. There are so many things prayers answers, gifts, healing, peace, clarity, anything that you could ever ask or think of. Prayer is special. It is that one-on-one -on -one time with God where you can press in, where you can just go hard. You know, prayer is it's a conversation. Hey, God, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to be um oh, super proper you know it's a conversation like you would talk to a friend you would talk to god i mean without the cursing for those who curse but it's just yeah god i got this problem going on right now like i'm really struggling like you don't have to be like father god in the name of jesus um uh, uh, most holy and wise god it's just no it's a simple conversation and as you continue to do it it'll change it'll it'll evolve you know right now i know a lot of us are on our morning wake up, go to bed, um, uh, uh, lunchtime prayers. But the more you do it, when you just standing around and you start praying, praying for the people outside, people you don't know, people you do know, that person you just encountered, like prayer changes things. Like, and all prayer doesn't have to be for self. Okay. Um, but prayer changes you. And once you change, the people around you gonna see that change and they will treat you accordingly. Uh, for me, it's like letting my light shine, like let God's light shine because if I'm around people that's just cursing all day and then they start to see a change in me or my behaviors, they also, in a sense, if they your friends, they have a newfound respect for you or they give you that respect and they'll change or they won't say certain things or they won't do certain things around you. So you know, don't count it out. Pray. Um, that's actually all I had. Um, when I had gotten this, 
I was kind of in a rough place and I was kind of like, you know what? I give up and I can't do this. I'm just blah, blah, blah. And then this hit me and I was like, okay, God, I hear you. Like I gotta stop trying to depend on people or the world or look for answers elsewhere when I just need to come to you. I need to seek you. I know better. I was taught better. And sometimes you feel disconnected, but you can't let a disconnect stop you from pursuing or getting back because all the devil need is you to stay disconnected and he still win. If you like, oh, I'm not feeling it. I don't feel like praying or I don't feel like God is with me anymore. God will never leave you. He'll forsake you. He's still there. You just need to tap into it. And ask Lord, like, give me that desire. Give me that yearn. Give me that fire that I felt in me to, to chase after you, like, to, to come to you, to seek you. He's always there. He's ready, waiting with open arms for you to just come back home. Come back home. Um, this was all over the place. This is something that I think I want to do again. Um, I had to do it now, how it was. So please receive it um, with open arms. The next time I try to do one of these, I'm going to try to definitely be more organized, have my scriptures written out um, so that it can come across better and flow better. But I think that if I didn't do this in this moment, I would have found reasons not to do it. So yeah, stick with me while I'm sticking with you guys and, um, I'll see you guys soon. I hope you enjoy the video. Bye.